This is a 2004 Nissan Maxima. The Maxima has always been an aspirational car for people, believe it or not. Back in the 80s, if you had one, you were doing something right. This is the sixth generation Maxima, because believe it or not, the Maxima has been around since the early 80s. There's been wagons, there's been a diesel version, there's been the four-door sports car, the SE. You know, the Maxima was a special car. It may not be anymore, but it still has a place in my heart. So today, I'm going to review a 2004 Nissan Maxima. Oh, and this one just happens to be a convertible with suicide doors. So let's talk a little Maxima history now. Back in the early 80s, the Maxima came out badged as a Datsun Maxima. It had a wagon, there was a diesel. It just kind of come out at a time where Japanese cars were really starting to hit the market. Right around the mid 80s when it was the Nissan Maxima, that boxy style was a hit. The 87 Maxima SE, if you had that with a five speed, black on black, you were the guy. Everybody wanted that car. Everybody wanted a Maxima. If you had a Maxima, you were doing something right. Up into the 90s where the SE was the model to have. Sport compact styling and sport compact handling, but it was the mid-sized car. The Maxima had it all. So let's talk sixth generation Maxima styling. Today's Maxima flowy, sporty, nice lines, the V-Motion grille. Factory, this car had a bucktooth grille and a toaster slot for a sunroof. It didn't open. Very controversial at the time. Luckily, Nissan also offered the car with your traditional sunroof that opened up and, you know, was functional as a sunroof. Look at your little face. Little cute face with your HID headlights and your, your grill. Cutie. So one thing the Maxima had plenty of was trunk space. You could fit golf club, gross, a suitcase, air suspension. You can fit air suspension. All the components of air suspension. That's what the 6th gen holds best. So let's talk about another upgrade to this Maxima. As you can see, I've got some custom wheels forged and behind those custom wheels, Aki Bono brakes, the hallmark of any true performance Nissan. So one thing that this Maxima actually has from the factory is something called the Elite Package. The Elite Package. What did that give you? Well, it turned the Maxima into a true four-door sports car. As you can see, the back seat, bucket seats, your own armrest, heated seats, and an up and down for your rear privacy window shade that now has no function. So let's move inside of this Maxima. Normal features include a trunk release. However, that car no longer has a roof. Your gas door release. Come on 2004 with your memory seats. Coming over here, we have power folding mirrors a heated steering wheel, traction control, power adjustable steering wheel, power seats, all standard, all Maxima. So what helped put all that power to the ground was this beautiful five-speed automatic, which actually I don't mind. It's actually not a bad transmission because in one of my newer cars with the nine-speed auto, I feel like I'm always looking for gears. You put this one in drive, it goes. Bose audio tape and CD player. As you can see here, we've got driver control and passenger control and dual control for the climate control. 2004 was coming in pretty hard. As you can see, Nissan liked buttons back then buttons for everything and that's not necessarily a bad thing because today everything is a swipe or a touch or motion or finger wave or dance move activated i kind of prefer the buttons 
Now, one thing that I want to point out is this key. You got this key if you bought a Sentra, a Frontier, an Altima. Anything Nissan made had that key. You would think having a Maxima with the Elite package would make it, you know, some sort of special aluminum key. Nope. You got that. Not even remote start. So today's Maxima has a digital gauge cluster coupled with a analog gauge for your RPM and an analog gauge for your speedometer. This one has gauges too. Tells you how fast you're going. Tells you how much gas you have. Tell you how hot your car is. How many miles are on it. And what gear you're in. The luxury. So as you can see, the seat belts had to be put in aftermarket to accommodate the fact that there's no roof. So there's no B pillars. So there's nowhere to mount them. So this Maxima actually has some old school lap belts from a random GM model from the 80s or the 90s or whenever that was. But small cost to pay when you're riding in a Maxima with no roof. Now let's talk Maxima for a second, specifically this one. Let's talk about where this car came from. Supposedly, this car came from Florida, and that's where the roof was modified. Um, the suicide doors came later, and this car has had about four owners. I believe the current owner is the fifth. He's added some things under the hood, the brakes, so this truly is one of a kind. Multiple people have had a hand in customizing this Maxima, but as you can see, it's just absolutely freaking awesome. You see that butt? See that Maxima butt? I love bubbly Nissan butts. And this has it. Complete with the factory spoiler, LED taillights, angular body lines. Oh, and no roof. So you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, Nick, where's the roof? Hey, Nick, where does the roof go? Hey, Nick, how do you put the top up? Well, you don't. There is no top. There is no roof. This is how it is. This Maxima was made to live as a convertible 24-7, 365. And luckily for the owner, it's in San Diego, so he shouldn't have too much to worry about there. So let me tell you what I love about this generation Maxima. It's just, I think it's cool. I think the toaster slot sunroof is interesting. No one else had it. Did it open? No. Was it functional? No. Was it cool? I thought so. You could get this in a six-speed. You could get this big, luxury-ish sedan in a six-speed. You can't find them anymore. I've tried. But you could get that. Nissan was building an enthusiast car without really telling anybody. The Elite package, which I don't think many people know about, turned this into a true four-door sports car-ish. And that's the problem, is everything with this generation is the ish. The previous generations had it. If you had an SE Maxima with a five or six speed, you had the car, you know? You had the car everybody wanted. This was the car that lesser people wanted. Not lesser as in money-wise, but just not as many people. So driving through San Diego traffic in the Maxima convertible, it's, uh, <laughs> I cannot stop laughing. It's strange, it's weird, it's everything you could expect to be in a four-door convertible. It just feels so right. So what do I think about the Maxima convertible? It's not to love. It's a Maxima convertible. It's special. It's unique. It has Akibono brakes. It's got air suspension. It's got a sport bar. I mean, seriously. Not to mention we have suicide doors here. I am thrilled I got to come here, not only drive it, but get to just see it in person and appreciate it for what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did.